Namaste. How's it going? The CSF, or the cerebrospinal fluid, we produce in the ventricular system, running through the spinal cord down the hips and then back up to the brain, as well as our sexual energies, our byproduct, the reproductive byproduct, semen for the men and the ovum, or the egg cell for the women, are the two most potent energetic products of our autonomic functions. They are so close to the purity of the prana. And to control them is essential or vital for the preservation of the life force, the prana. However, they are meant to drain out. That's our function. That's the normal course. We produce them, we drain them out through yeah, the activity of the brain, so we can't perform uh, tasks, yeah, physical, mental, even the energetic tasks to support our vital systems, yeah? and through our sexual expression. That's the natural course. You know, we produce, we drain. Produce, we drain. Yeah. In energy channeling, yeah, we need to gain control of these forces. But it doesn't mean stopping them. The book says, yes, control, gaining control. But we need to understand where the control should be coming from so we don't force the mind. It happens organically. So this is important because controlling through the mind and suppressing this natural course could create conflict in the future. And this is what I love about Hatha Yoga. It's a scientific process of understanding yeah, both the anatomical, the energetic, and even the psychic side of the practice. Okay, our bodies are made up of many thousand energetic channels. They are the absorber, they're like sponge. They can absorb not just um, the energy, but also the blockages, yes. And our bodies, yeah, are not given the gift of the openness. It's our original sin. So we're full of like blockages, <laughs> sins, yeah. And then Hatha Yoga, in yoga in general, teaches us how to you know, purify those channels so we can open them, so we can absorb yeah, more energy, so we can buffer them. Therefore, yeah, we don't force the mind to do a certain technique for the sake of doing it. Rather, yeah, the energy gets absorbed yeah, by the nadis. All right, so this is really the essence of the kriyas, the preparatory techniques. All right, now let me zero in on the sexual energy. Okay, now, controlling of the sexual energy doesn't mean stopping it using the mind. So it happens because you don't feel it anymore, because you're draining internally. So when the nadis become more open and purified, yeah, the energy, the sexual energy, the energy or the chemicals there, your pituitary gland produces, yeah, instead of transmuting into sexual energy, the sexual urge, yeah, it becomes like a spiritual force. Yeah. How does it happen? All right. So the nadis absorb the energies which yeah, yeah, are meant yeah, for what? For sexual expression. Yeah. So you are controlling it, but not stopping it because you're draining internally. Your nadis absorb this force. And then when it happens, there's what we call the feedback inhibition. You're right. So when the nadis are so efficient absorbing that sexual energy, which should have in the normal course be drained out through the sexual expression, you keep it. And then your pituitary gland will sense that, oh, I don't need to produce that energy anymore because you are full of that energy within you. But it's not anymore. Yeah, a sexual energy is a spiritual energy. And this spiritual energy you store in your nadis is preserved. And this will transmute into what? Yeah, many, um, I say, manifestations. Sounds. Yes, yeah. The sexual energy, when we're able to transmute it into a spiritual force, becomes sound, nada, which we can meditate upon yeah, during our stillness, visions or images, radiance, light. 
yes, when you meditate and then when you just allow your eyes to relax, that it just happens. And even uh, searching for that vision, no, you don't have to search for that image because the moment you close your eyes, because you're brimming with the spiritual force within you already, it just appears. Light, radiance, blinking lights, shapes, patterns, colors. What else? Yeah, sound, music. Yeah. Some people hear like musical instruments playing and inspiration because this is the creative energy. Right. That's why it's a way of expressing our creative power, our creative functions to yeah, procreate. But when it becomes a spiritual fire, a spiritual energy, it becomes a source of your creative inspiration and it resides here. All right, I don't want to be too poetic about this. So the sexual energy is hot. Yeah, it's restless. And hot energy rises, right? Yeah, so uh, instead of draining that energy out through our sexual function, once we're able to preserve it, the apanavayu rises. Hot energy rises. And the prana, we inspire the breath. It's cool. It's descending. Cool yeah, energy descends. And they blend in the hot. And this is the essence of what? Well, cleansing, and then the kriyas and the kumbhakas. Yeah, during your pranayama, pranayama is the most potent in attaining organic control of the energetic forces around us. So when the nadis are open, when they're purified, and when the bandhas are there to support us, we can channelize the sensation of the apana up. And then the prana descends and they blend the hot. And this is the beautiful manifestation of yeah, the, tran uh, the, the transcendence of your energy. Yeah, your sexual energy becomes a creative energy. It becomes a source of inspiration. Your creative uh, function beyond yeah, the bodily functions. Yeah. Teaching, service. Yeah. It's, it could be an inspiration for like, yeah, an artistic expression. Ideas, writing. So really, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that we gain uh, control of, but we don't force it. It just happens. Yeah. Because the books are very straightforward, and they're quite easy to understand from their superficial uh, meaning. But for us to really attain yeah, the essence, we need to go through the techniques. Go through the techniques, face them. Yeah, there might be stumbles there, mistakes, but we need to exercise that willpower and dedication, and then we can come back. Yeah, and then when we come back, we attain, and then we, we bring with us that realization. It's not something forceful, it's something organic. And then we go through again the process. And as we go through the process, we become better and better in gaining control. Yeah. So the control there becomes an yeah, organic expression. Yeah. And then when it happens, yes, we're still humans. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. When it comes from here, yeah, when we express, for example, our sexual uh, energy through love, compassion, respect, yeah, tolerance, yeah to rip or procreate and to keep the cycle of life going. It's beautiful. It's divine. Yeah. We don't feel guilt, remorse, because if we force the mind to, con to suppress it, it could create a spiritual conflict. Yeah. But if it happens organically, because you know you have to express it as a creative inspiration, as a creative energy, then it's beautiful. Yeah. And that's the essence of control. It's not stopping, it's not suppressing, it's gaining control of its essence. So we know how to preserve it. So, for example, yeah, you're, you're draining this energy out through your sexual function expression, then you know how to yeah, produce and then steal the energy again, and then use it for higher meditative states. Thank you, and I'll catch you in the next one.